Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are gonna do things a little bit different. I am making elderberry jam or jelly. So I guess we might as well get started. We will kind of touch base on how to do water bath canning if you're new to that. So first up, I went out to the elderberry patch and we picked a whole bunch of elderberries. I have about an ice cream bucket full of them, maybe a little bit more, and we destemmed them and now we are going to put them in a pot. Okay guys, so this will take a little while to cook down, but you just wanna make sure that nothing is sticking. So there are a few ways of doing this. I like the chunks of elderberries in my jam, but I know some people, they get it all down to no chunks. Something I have found that works well is the potato smasher. It's just easy and it gets it done. I have used the food processor, but I don't find that it gives the right consistency that I'm looking for. So long story short, there's tons of ways to do this as well as everything else. But while I'm multitasking doing this, we are also, we have the water bath canner going, there's water into it, and we are letting that boil for a little while so that it is ready for when our jars are ready. So you definitely want this on medium heat. It takes a while. Usually it takes somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes to get all of these smashed and the juices out. Some things about elderberries, they are toxic unless they are heated. So you always wanna make sure that you cook elderberries before you consume them. They are very good for health benefits. So if you have like a cold coming on or anything like that, they're always good to eat or drink. I know a lot of people will make juice out of these and use it kind of like a cough syrup and it's really good for, once again, when you're sick. So that's another option also. I know that if you don't have a patch of elderberries, you are able to order these. So I will link something below on where to order elderberries at. I know that there's a place down the road from us that you can actually do picking of your own elderberries, which is always an option too. So we will check back in a couple minutes when I get this all cooked down. Okay guys, so we have finished cooking this down and now it is a nice liquid. I do not put mine through a sleeve, so I do have still some seeds in there, which is completely fine. I like my jelly to have a little bit more texture to it. So next up is some lemon juice. So there is exactly three cups of elderberry juice in here. And so you just add a fourth cup of lemon juice. And now we're gonna let that cook for a minute on medium heat. So if you end up with, let's say, four cups, and you want to do a double recipe, you can totally do that. Um, you just need six cups in total. So if you have four cups, you could then put two cups of water in this and off balance it. Okay, now that that is all mashed together, we are gonna add in Shore Gel. This is my favorite type of pectin. 
but you are more than welcome to use any kind you want. You can get this at your Walmart or Target. And we are going to dump that right in. And we are going to stir. So we're gonna bring this to a rolling boil. A rolling boil doesn't stop boiling when you stir it. You wanna keep stirring and making sure that you stir so nothing sticks to the bottom. We're gonna let that sit for a minute while I go and grab the sugar and butter. So we are gonna add one teaspoon of butter And this actually gets rid of the foamingness. If you don't add the butter, which is completely fine, you'll get the same end result. It just takes out most of those bubbles. So again, we're just gonna stir this, waiting for it to have a rapid boil. Any Shore Gel product that you use will tell you not to double or triple the recipe, but I have found that you can always double it and get the same result. I, on the other hand, have never tried tripling it, so that might be the extent of it. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you've ever doubled or tripled the recipe. So while this is boiling, we're gonna get our jars ready. If you are new to canning, let me tell you, Anybody can do a water bath canning. It is super easy. It just requires a big pot with a lid with some water and you need to pick up some jars and lids and rings. I know a lot of people get worried that they're going to do something wrong, but really as long as you follow the recipe, there's really nothing that's going to happen. Okay guys, so we have reached the point of rapid boil. Again, rapid boil means that as you stir, the bubbles do not go away. So next up, we are going to put in four and a half cups of sugar. There are recipes online that call for less sugar, but I have found with elderberries, um, if they really need the extra sugar. So you may find with other ones that you don't. I know my raspberry jam that I made earlier this season did not have that much sugar in it and it was delicious. So it really just depends on what kind of berry you're making, but I find that elderberries are not super, super sweet, so the sugar definitely helps with that. Okay, so we are gonna stir in the sugar, and then we are gonna let it get back to a boil for exactly one minute. And then we are gonna remove this from the heat and then we are going to put it into our jars. So now that we've had a rolling boil, we're gonna remove it from the heat, and we are going to ladle it into our jars. These funnels come in very handy when filling jars for canning. And we need to leave a little head space. So before I fill up the next jar, I'll show you guys. So, we, I usually fill up to about here, and this allows enough headspace for that when it heats up, it still seals. I 
A handy tip if you're unsure if you prepared it correctly, you can stick a spoon of this in the freezer and check it out. I am not going to do that today. I can definitely tell that it is the right mixture and thickness. After you wipe all of the rims, you place your canning lids on each of them. And you place your brains on. You don't want to have them super, super tight, just tight enough that it's holding down the lid. Okay guys, so the pot is hot and boiling. Can we we're going to put our jars in for five minutes. You want the water to be at least an inch or two above the lids. So we put the cover back on and we wait. Timer has gone off. We're gonna take the lid off. And we're going to remove the jars. You may hear some popping and that's how you know the jar is sealing. So I wanted to add a quick voiceover because I forgot to mention it in the video. After you are done placing your jars on the counter to fully cool in about 12 to 24 hours, I will take the rims off of the jars and as long as the lid is sunk down, that is how you know that the jar has fully sealed and that's how you know that it will stay preserved for the winter. So I store all of mine in my cold storage room. So thank you guys so much for joining me in another video. This video is definitely different than the past few videos I've been doing, but I've been posting a lot of canning pictures and such on my Instagram, which will be linked below. And I thought it was time for me to share how to actually do this based on all the questions I've been getting. So if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and if you liked this type of video. I would love to do more of these in the future. So if you could comment below that you like this kind of stuff, I will create more videos like this. Thanks guys. And have a great rest of your day.